Okay. Um, so we are gonna go through an optic analysis uh, in this screencast today um, as part of the third learning set for the Advanced Language and Literature Chapter One, Reading the World Chapter. Um, let's start by reviewing the objectives. Um, your main objective is that you can determine the central idea of an image or painting and analyze its development and how it emerges and is shaped and refined by specific details. Um, so you're going to be using the optic analysis strategy to analyze a, a picture today um, called Life Goes On, Cheka, Ecuador, 2011. Um, this strategy is going to be super helpful in terms of breaking apart the different elements of the image and then looking at how they work together to um, form our, our main idea of the image as a whole. Um, when we are working today, we're gonna to be using the optic strategy, this handout, in order to fill in some notes. Um, I'm gonna be typing my notes in blue and hopefully um, it'll be big enough for you to see on the screen um, and we'll go from there. So the first thing that we do as part of the optic strategy is to start with O for overview. Um, you're gonna conduct a brief overview of the image of uh, the clip um, and you're gonna, you're gonna list what you see and provide a brief summary. So let's take a look at this image. Um, you'll see that first and foremost, whoops, there we go. Um, you'll see that there is a cross over here. Um, it's probably the first thing that we're drawn to. We see a fence jutting out and leaning towards the cross. Um, the fence is separating the farm or what we can assume might be a farm uh, with this green field. There are stones that are stacked kind of like a memorial. Um, and then there is also uh, maybe, a, this could also be a grave right here. Um, on the other side, we see that an animal that looks maybe something like a pig, right? Um, and uh, there's some form of building or fence in the background here, some other form right there. So those are the first things that we need to start typing. Um, and it's okay to make a bulleted list. You can write it in paragraph form. Um, so on the left, we see a cross standing up. Um, we see a fence jutting out and leaning toward the cross. Ooh, you can see that my list is interesting here. Let me see if I can get the same. There we go. Um, the fence separating a farm with a green field. Stones are stacked like a memorial or a grave. There's an animal on the other side of the fence. It could be a pig. some form of building or fence in the background of the image. Okay, so we have like a really good starting point right there. Um, just an overview of what we see here in the image. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start to break apart some of those parts we listed. So you're gonna scrutinize the parts of the image. Note any elements or details that seem important. Um, so you're asking yourself what details are included in the image and then use literary terms such as symbol or irony to describe the important details from the image. We're really going to talk a lot about the symbolism in the image and kind of maybe use those symbols to drive what we think the main idea might be. So again, I'm going to be typing in blue so that way you can kind of get an idea of what my answers are. So the first thing, obviously, I want to examine the cross. Now, when I think about the cross and the image here, I think it's really important to kind of consider what does a cross normally symbolize? Um, so for me, it might be death. You know, it could represent the grave, religious faith. Um, there's a number of things. Same with the stone memorial that we discussed. Um, you know, the passing of some of a loved one. Um, the pig, when we're talking about the pig and what that might represent, um, you know, pigs are generally uh, healthy, right? It means a healthy, full life, maybe. Um, 
be life in general. Um, let's see, what else can we examine? Um, the color green is probably worth noting. It's really, really healthy and green on this side, um, whereas over on this side, the grass seems to be a little bit more dead. Um, so that's worth noting. So we could say uh, greenery. The grass is greener on the side with the cross. Um, the falling chain link fence, right? That fence that's kind of like leaning over this way towards like the cross, leaning across those stones there. Um, that could represent, you know, leaning towards death. Maybe the chains mean we are bound to death. Again, there's no right or wrong answers. We're just kind of um, making uh, some inferences based on what we see. Um, rotting on the stones. You can see that the, you know, that's it's decaying, it's rotting there. Um, it could be from one side of the other being a newer life or death on one side and life on the other. Um, and then if you pay really close attention, you'll see that there's kind of a hole in the fence here. Um, and maybe that represents uh, the relationship between life and death. Um, maybe it's something that they're connected forever. Again, just kind of um, making some inferences based on what we see. The next thing that we do is we move into that T, the title, right? Where we read aloud um, the title and we look at if the title adds any new information to the work. Um, so again, the title of this image is Life Goes On, Chaka Ecuador, 2011. Um, there isn't really any significant history that we need to know. Um, about, you know, that year or um, that location. So um, the title in this case gives us an insight that even something that passes away, um, other aspects of life can evolve. Keep going, right? Um, it can become something new. And I get that from, you know, the life goes on piece. Definitely not the Cheka Ecuador 2011, um, but life goes on. What is the message that, you know, the photographer is trying to capture with that title? Um, again, it, it gives us some insight as to what they're trying to say about, you know, those rotting pieces that are decaying, but also the new life, the healthier grass, the pig that are coming out of that, right? Um, so then we get into the interrelationships and the conclusion piece. Um, we've looked at the title, we've looked at the different parts, and we've, uh, we've talked about a general overview of what the image is. And now we get into kind of piecing together, how does the title connect to the work itself? And why do you think the author chose that title? Um, again, I think that, you know, the author um, is trying to get us to examine uh, that, you know, the pig represents life, right? And how life can come from death, you know, and decay and rotting. How you spell rotting? No, rotting, R-O-T-T-I-N-G. There we go. Um, so new life comes out of death, right? And again, sometimes I like to do this with my own students is combine these two um, because I think that they, the interrelationships is really connected to the title. That's how we piece together how the title connects to the work as, as a whole. 
So again, I think that the conclusion, uh, we draw a conclusion about what the image is trying to state, right? It's whether it's making a theme, it's making an argument. Um, what do we think that the artist, or in this case, the photographer is trying to convey about human behavior? Um, and I think it's safe to say, based on what we were just talking about with the interrelationships and the title, uh, that life sprouts from death. And this is clear from the grass growing on top of the tombstone, right? In this image, we see that life is continuing to grow despite all this decay. So it's kind of like this never ending cycle. Um, so we could say that the grass is a representation of life and the tombstone is a representation of death. So you can go even further to explain what uh, they're trying to say with even though death happens, life still goes on. Um, this is clear that even though there is a fence representing the idea of separation between life and death, And the idea of chains and the hole in the fence representing the segue from one to the other. It shows the constant connection between life and death. One cannot seem to be present without the other. So there we go. We have our full optic analysis. Again, we, we went through that overview piece where we took a first quick glance at the image and described what we saw. We went back and we looked at the parts, um, the different uh, pieces of the image, and tried to um, assign some symbolism or some meaning to those individual parts. We went back and we looked at the title and we talked about what the new information the title might reveal. Um, specifically here, we talked about the idea of life going on and we uh, made some connections to that, some inner relationships between the title and the work itself. And then we tried to uh, come up with a conclusion about what the photographer is trying to say um, through their work. And here we decided that, you know, it is very clear from the different elements that life does continue, right? Even though death and life are interconnected and that, you know, that they're this endless cycle that um, one can't be present without the other, um, that life continues to keep going despite, you know, death being a, a constant presence in our life. So um, I hope that this screencast was helpful uh, in working through the optic analysis. And um, now you'll get to try doing the optic analysis on your own with some of uh, Salvador Dali's works. Thanks.